Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to install and set up a light burn camera into the Monport 80 watt CO2 laser. Stick around. So to be honest, this wasn't an upgrade that I thought I'd be making. I've seen the webcams on the lasers for quite a while, especially in the Glowforge. It seemed cool, it seemed neat, but I wasn't really sure that it was something that I would even wanna use or spend the money on. But after doing a little bit more research on it, and looking at Lightburn's line of cameras, I realized that for about $120, $140, I think it was, you really get a lot for what you pay for. And it helps you take material like this that otherwise would have been wasted and make it usable. So the installation and the calibration of the camera was really easy. Let me show you how I did it. When I purchased the camera from Lightburn, I also went ahead and bought the mount that goes with it. If you don't wanna buy this, you can 3D print your own. I started the installation by installing the camera mount to the tallest point of the lid, and that was easy, it's just double-sided taped. Then I ran the USB cable along the right side of the lid down into the unit and along the right side of the machine. This was really easy. I just used some double-sided tape wire management clips that I got on Amazon to secure the wire and ran the end of the USB cable through an existing hole where some of the other wires were going into the control board. From there, I used a double female USB connector to connect the Lightburn camera to the cable that was formerly in the flash portion of the control board. Doing it this way allows me to now use a second USB cable from the flash port of the laser to my computer for easy connection. I saw this on another channel called Bearded Builds where he installed a Lightburn camera on his similar laser and thought it was a really good idea. I'll link to that video down below so you can check his out. So now that we have the camera installed and everything connected to the computer, we're gonna go ahead and go into Lightburn and we're gonna go into the camera control tab. If you don't have this on your control panel over here, all you gotta do is go to window and make sure that you have camera control switched on. So in the camera menu, we're gonna go ahead and check our Lightburn camera and you can see that it shows up here. So we know that it's connected. Now we're gonna go to laser tools and click on calibrate camera lens. This is gonna bring up the lens calibration wizard. Again, we're gonna click on our Lightburn camera. And this particular model has a fisheye lens, but if it does not, you click on standard lens. We're not gonna use a preset. We're gonna go ahead and do the full calibration because that's gonna give us the best results. Click next. Now it's going to ask you to print out this eight and a half by 11 photo with some black dots on it. And that's used to calibrate the lens. To get that printout, it's easy. You just click on this link here and it will take you to this page that you can print out. Once you print out the calibration paper from Lightburn, go ahead and glue it to a piece of cardboard. I just used some scrap cardboard here, just so it's rigid, because you're gonna to have to put this at angles during the calibration process, and it's gonna make it a lot easier. So another tip that I have is put a piece of plywood or lighter shade material into your bed before you put your test sample down. And I found that that just helps Lightburn pick it up a lot easier and get you a lower score, which is what you want when you're calibrating this. Okay, so I put my plywood backer onto the bed and my test dot pattern. I'm gonna select Lightburn camera and hit next. And you could see my bed matches closely to the example drawing up here. So we're gonna hit capture. Okay, and it said the pattern was found, but I have a really high score. So let's try that again. And now it's dropped a lot. I could proceed, but I'm gonna capture this again. And now the pattern's been found. Pretty good score, 0.13. I'm gonna go ahead and click next. And you can see that it's asking me to now put this in the bottom of the bed. So I'm gonna match this picture. And it's also showing it tilted up at an angle. Okay, so I've tilted the picture up a little bit using a two by four. And that's where having the cardboard backing really helps out. I'm gonna capture and I've got a score of 0 0.09, that's good, I'm gonna move on. So you're just gonna keep repeating this process about eight or nine times here. It takes pictures all throughout the bed, but you just wanna keep going through this and following the directions from the wizard and try to get the best score that you can. So in that case, it's telling me that the pattern's not found. So you just gotta kind of readjust it, make sure it's up at an angle, try again, and that time it found it. That's it for this part of the calibration. Now, we are going to need to align the camera. So again here, we just click on our Lightburn camera, it's already selected, and hit next. 
Okay, now here's the camera alignment screen. So what Lightburn is going to want you to do now is to print out this test image here. And they want you to make this as large as you can for the best accuracy. So it's telling me it's scaling it at 273. And it's getting this information, I think, from the controller. You know, it's connected currently to my Monport 80 watt, my 24 by 36 bed. So that's where that number is coming from. And I believe that's pretty much as big as you can print this on this bed size. So that automatically populates. You can adjust that though if you want to make it bigger or smaller. Now for the speeds here, we just want to make a nice dark engraving. So I'm going to set these settings to what I know will produce that with my particular machine, but that's going to vary depending on what laser you're setting this up with. Now inside my bed, I've also put down a full sheet or full bed size sheet of MDF. So 24 by 36 sheet of MDF so that I'm able to fill the entire bed size with this sample image or at least as large as it can go. Now you have a frame button here. You can click that and that's going to go ahead and frame this test image. So you can make sure you're on track. So that looks good. I'm going to shut the door and go ahead and run this. Okay, so while this is running, I think it's a good time. If you're liking what I'm doing here on the channel, if you like this video so far, go ahead and please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out a lot. It helps push the video out to others who want to see it as well. And if you really like what I'm doing here, please subscribe. I would really appreciate it. We hit our goal of 500 before the end of June. So I really appreciate that. Now our next goal is 1,000 by the end of the year. I think we can do it, but I need your help. Thanks a lot. Okay, so now that our sample image has run, we're going to click Next. And it's going to bring us to this menu where it's going to ask us to move the laser head out of the machine. Mine is already out of the way, but if you need to use these arrows to move it, you just click on those. I'm going to put it to the back right. And when that is done, just go ahead and click Capture Image. And there's our bed. Click Next. Now, here it's going to tell you to zoom in to try to find the center of our crosshairs here on each one. And they're going to want you to click on each number in the center. As close as you can get to the center. If you mess up like I did just there, you just, just click Undo. And starting with number one, you're going to put the crosshair marker right and the center. And you're going to go in order. One, two, three. Let's do that one again. Good. And four. Good. This is why it's really important to print that sample image dark. Because if it's not dark enough, it's really hard to see the center of that crosshair. Now let's go ahead and click next. And we're done. So here is how we test this to make sure it's good. Remember, if you don't have this camera control up here. Just go ahead and go to the window tab and click on the camera control. Make sure that's checked. But once you have that up here, you can go ahead and click update overlay. And this is going to move the light burn camera image onto your bed. So again, this is this is again why you want to print this dark because sometimes it can be a little hard to see. Okay, so now we have our image copied onto our bed in Lightburn. What we're going to do is we're going to zoom in here and we're going to test to make sure this is calibrated by drawing a rectangle which is going to border the number two like so. So let's set this to a line and let's go ahead and run this and see how it turns out. Okay, so you can see that my rectangle appears to be well aligned around the number two. But let's try another test to verify that we're still good. Okay, so now the next test that I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in even further and I'm going to put some text right here and I'm going to try to line this up right here on the crosshairs. I'm going to set this to fill and let's give this a try. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So, you know, to verify your alignment, you can do a few more tests like this, as many as you want, just to kind of get a good feel for it. But I feel comfortable with how this is set up right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put another piece of material in there, and I'm going to 
do more of a real world example of how I use this camera on a daily basis. So my next test is going to be more of a real world example of how I personally use the Lightburn camera in my business to help utilize scrap pieces like this. We make a lot of products that have raised names, raised lettering. So it's really beneficial to be able to fit them in here anywhere you can on these scrap pieces so you make full use of it. Now you can use this without the camera. You can frame it and kind of go back and forth. And I've done that in the past, it works, but the camera is really accurate. It makes it so much simpler. Check it out. Okay, so now I've changed the material. I need to go ahead and update my overlay. So I'll click that button. And here is my material down on the bed. So what I'm gonna do is an example of something that we do all the time. And I'm going to write a name and scale this up. And let's see if we can't fit it right here on the material. So if we zoom in more, we see we're pretty close to the edge here. This is going to be a good test. Let's see if this works. Placement looks really good. So now that we have a new, new piece of material in, we're going to update our overlay. And we're going to draw a rectangle on this open area of the piece. And I'm going to try to get it pretty close to the edge just to see how accurate we can get this. Let's try it out. Okay, let's pull this piece out. I'm not going to move the rest of it, but I'm going to take that piece out. And let's go back to Lightburn and let's update our overlay to see how we did. And that's pretty darn good. I mean, our box, I mean, you have a little bit of a curve with the laser, but our box is, is right there. So I'd say we have a pretty successful camera alignment. Okay, so there we have it. Installation and setup of the Lightburn camera for our Monport 80 watt CO2 laser. I really love this addition. It steps up the game of this laser a whole lot. Again, like I said before, I didn't think it was gonna be that big of a deal, but it really does make a big difference to be able to get this accurate, to be able to utilize all your scraps, especially if you're in the sign business or anything like that where you're needing to engrave or to cut out shapes to eliminate waste. This thing has been awesome. I really enjoy it. Well, that's it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll be sure to answer as many as I can. And don't forget to check out my other videos in this series if you're interested in this 80 watt CO2 laser by Monport. It's awesome. Thanks a lot and I'll see you on the next one.